Hey everybody, this week's Torah portion is Parshat Korach, and Korach is the one who led a rebellion against Moshe and Aaron and the leadership, had his complaints, had his issues, very dramatic Parsha about his fight with Moshe. And the beginning of the Parsha it starts off by telling us, Vikach Korach, Korach took, and then it says he's the son of Yitzhar, and it gives his lineage, he's from Kahat and from the tribe of Levi, and his accomplices, Datan and Aviram, and where they're from, B'nai Eliav, and also own the son of Pelat, and he's from the tribe of Ruvain. And then it says they got up before Moshe, and they start complaining and rebelling against them. But the Torah doesn't tell us, Vikach, it says, Vikach, he took, what did he take? It doesn't give us an object of what he took. So the commentaries, you know, they go to town on that, they start talking about it. Rashi's second comment he tells us, Vikach Korach, Mashach Roshe Sanhedriot Shebehem Bedvarim. He drew in the Sanhedrin, he drew in other leaders, Bedvarim, with words. Vayikach, he took, meaning he persuaded, he took others to his side. And how did he do that? He didn't physically lift them up. Bedvarim, he took them with words. It teaches us the power of persuasion of what we could do with words, how we can affect others with words. So much so that, again, the Torah gives us the word v'yikach to physically uproot something and put it elsewhere. That is what words can do. Words can hurt, words can heal. We once have had a campaign about that, how the words can dramatically affect another person. We've seen that historically. Adolf Hitler, Yamach Shemo, whose name should be erased, he should rot in hell forever. What was he? He was a zero. He was a nobody. He was getting nowhere. He was a failed painter. He had one thing going for him and one thing only, and it wasn't his good looks. He certainly wasn't good looking at all. He had the power of words, the power of his rhetoric. That's what got him to where he did so much destruction. On the other hand, you had another powerful leader who also had a way with words to counter it, and that was Churchill, thank God, who countered it and fought it. But that's on a very big globe, his, global historical sense. On an everyday sense, we know in a very smaller way, people have very powerful words. Every one of us has been influenced by a teacher or a parent or a person who said something that changed our lives, that made a difference. V'ikach, they took us. They said something and it just transported us into a different place, into a different direction. That's the koach hadibor the Talmud talks about. The difference between man and animals is the power of speech. Words can hurt. Words can heal. Words can make. Words can break. V'yikach, you could take someone and put them in a whole different place by the power of words. That's what Korach was able to do. He had the gift of the gab, and he was able to take people, great people, not schleppers, the Sanhedrin, leaders. He had 250 leaders and turned them against the greatest leader, Moshe. That is the power of words. Words are very, very powerful. And we know, like we said, we can change people's lives. Ever have someone come up to you and say, you know, you one time said this thing, and sometimes they're telling us it wasn't a very nice thing and we hurt them, but sometimes it's the exact opposite. You know, you one time said this thing and it had a very meaningful impact on my life and it changed me. Sometimes we don't even remember saying those things. It shows us the power of words. Don't be like Korach. Make sure you use your words to build, to create, to make something good and not to break down and not to go against great leaders like Moshe. The power of words, that's one of the things we've got to learn from this week's Torah portion. Have a good Shabbat.